Hey everybody, welcome to the Switch channel. My name is Mike. And today I've been asked to talk about a topic for a friend of mine who works with bariatric patients. And one of the questions she wanted me to speak to was how to be alone with yourself and staying in an unfulfilling relationship when you begin your weight reduction or bariatric journey. So that's a pretty heavy topic and I'm only gonna share my perspective. This is not advice, this is just perspective. And interestingly enough, I was listening to a Mel Robbins podcast recently, so I'm gonna share some things I learned on her podcast that I think might be helpful. And one of her big themes was letting go. And I think in the context of being in a non-supportive relationship, if that's truly the question that needs to be answered, I'm in a relationship where I'm not being supported to continue on this bariatric surgery road. If there isn't support there, then I think what, what may need to be considered is this idea of letting go. Letting go of that significant other. Letting go of others who are not supporting you or don't want you to change because they like you the way you are. People who may be distracting you from what you actually want. And again, my presumption is that you've been very thoughtful on this decision to go through with bariatric surgery and you're still not getting the support you want. So under that context, I wanted to just share a perspective. And so something to consider is this idea of letting go. And in the spirit of it being rainy and cold in October, uh, we see the leaves changing color and ultimately falling off the trees. And Mel actually spoke about this in one of her podcasts. And, and why do leaves fall from trees, right? It's a letting go. It's the tree letting go of the leaves so it can survive through the winter when there's snow on the ground and it has no other way to get moisture. It needs to hang on to whatever it can. And if the leaves stay on, the leaves will literally suck the moisture from the tree and kill the tree. And I thought this idea of the tree letting the leaves go so it could survive spoke to this topic of, of letting go of someone who may not be supporting your bariatric goals. And so another question you want to ask yourself is, is holding on holding you back? So is holding on to this significant other holding you back from what you actually want and desire? So again, my assumption is you've been very thoughtful on the decision to go through bariatric surgery. And if you have, then this is important to you. So is the holding on of this significant other holding you back from getting what you actually want? And so how do you discern? If someone is holding you back, she says, if it's a drain or a pain, let go. And so two questions you can ask yourself in the context of this current relationship you're in, is it a drain or is it a pain? And I'm assuming the answer is pretty straightforward. And so to make room for the good stuff that you actually want in your life, you're gonna have to clear out some room. And in this case, clear out the significant other so that you can get more of what you actually want in life. And so that is, this, that is this idea of letting go. And the other thing she talked about is just the amount of energy we put into hanging on to the significant other, how much it's distracting us. Uh, but again, high level, how much energy is being drained from you to keep this person in your life? And imagine how much more energy you would have in the letting go to free up putting that energy into what you actually want. And so if this significant other is not serving you anymore, if it's not helping you grow, if it's not supporting you, then it comes back to that same question. Why have I not let go yet? And a lot of this is rooted in our desire for things to be familiar, predictable, and the same. The subconscious wants as much predictability as it can find. And often that means whether it's a vice or a virtue, right? Vice not being good, virtue being good. The subconscious just wants that predictability. And so you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, am I hanging on for someone who's supporting me? Or am I hanging on to someone who is not supporting me? And in the context of vice or virtue, which would you rather have? So like I said before, she also talked a lot about energy. And so when you're consuming all this energy, trying to hang on to something that isn't serving you any longer, it deprives you of putting energy into things that actually could support you. 
And she just asked you to consider how would you feel if you had more positive energy in your life aligned with what you actually want. Another element of this I think is giving yourself permission. Permission to get what you want, to have what you want, to pursue what you want and not have to explain yourself over and over to somebody who may disagree with you. And if this is in the context of a significant other, then it's gonna be that hard decision to say, I'm gonna to have to let go because this is in my best interest. And right now, at this point in my life, I am focused on me. And that is certainly okay because what we know is nothing in life is permanent. So another thing to keep in mind here is that letting go is not failure. Letting go is a conscious decision to let go of the energy that is going into something that is not supporting you to be opened up to allow room for something that does support you. So now, how to be alone, right? So I think what's important here is to not think of alone as forever, but as temporary. Nothing is permanent in life, right? So reframe what it means to be alone. I would say, if that's the story you're telling yourself, is I don't wanna be alone, maybe the story is, I need to focus on myself and on these skills and on these behaviors that are going to get me what I actually want. And in this case, it's getting through bariatric surgery successfully. It's redesigning your life around better eating habits, better exercise habits, better stress management, better sleep, all the things that are associated with better health. And so I think it's important just to minimize this idea of being alone and focus more on it being about taking time to focus on you, who happens to be alone. And so when things get hard, I would ask you to pay attention to what that discomfort is telling you. Oftentimes, we can tell ourselves it means something reflexively when if we just stay with it a little bit longer, we may get a little more clarity on what it actually means. When things get hard, these are obstacles, these are setbacks, and this is the resilience and grit muscle we need to develop in our lives to get through it. So these setbacks are simply learning moments. So appreciating them for what they are, learning moments, just ask yourself, what am I being asked to learn right now? And then take the time to actually learn that. And so always remember the subconscious wants the familiar. And what you're doing right now is a conscious, intentional deviation from the norm. And so it's gonna take some time and repetition to develop these new muscles, these new habits, this new environment for the subconscious to get familiar with that. And the other thing I always tell my clients too is use humor in these situations, right? So you've got the inner critic and the inner advocate. The inner critic would be your subconscious saying, just do what you did yesterday, no matter how little it was, you survived, just do enough to get by. And the inner advocate is saying, no, 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 there's so much more for us to do to help you become a better version of yourself. And so find humor that the, the critic that, that lazy subconscious who's just doing enough to get by is gonna try to convince you to the best of its ability to not do what is required to change. Your inner advocate is who you need to turn the volume up on. Let that inner advocate scream so loud at the critic that the critic eventually, over time, will just back down. And this is where repetition, consistency, mindset come into play. Um, this is going to require a lot of intentionality, but over time what happens is when the inner advocate's voice is so loud, the inner critic just gives up. And it says, I can see over the last several weeks you've been very consistent. I give up. You are the type of person who, whatever you've demonstrated the last few weeks. So just know again, nothing is permanent. And by consistently making different decisions, you will weaken the subconscious's grip on that old behavior and you'll be replacing it with new behavior. So I guess the last thing I wanna say is just keep in mind it is a process. The outcome is the end game, but your focus, the controllables, the choices you can make every day are the process. And when you focus on the process every day, you are gonna dramatically increase the likelihood of getting what you actually want. So those are my words of encouragement for you is that, you know, there's a lot of, so here's my words of encouragement is, there's power and value in letting go, giving yourself permission, getting rid of that negative energy, the, the energy you're, you're hanging on to that's distracting you from what you actually want, getting that out of your life and putting in 
the positive energy you need to be more successful in achieving this weight reduction goal is important. Again, giving yourself permission. Letting go is not failure. When it gets hard, remember the subconscious just wants to survive, not optimize. So let your inner advocate scream louder and more consistently than your inner critic. And remember it's a process. Day in and day out, do the work, and you will find in the end, you're gonna more than likely get what you want. So stay the course, I know you can do this. Make the right decisions now so your future self will thank you.